This week's plant we're going to be focusing on is Miscanthus sinensis gracilimus. Now, personally speaking of all the grasses, I think this is one of the nicest grasses for the garden because it's got these wonderful long thin blades that just kind of blow in the breeze uh, and just give a really nice uh, attractive look to it. Uh, it's another grass that honestly when you sight it in the garden, uh, you always want to make sure you kind of try to sight it so that you can either have it backlit in the morning or backlit in the evening. Especially later in the season when the copper colored plumes come out on this, they just get lit up uh, by the sun in, in the morning or, or late in the day. Now, Gracilimus is going to be one of the taller miscanthus grasses out there. This one is going to top out around six to eight feet tall with the plumes. Uh, so you do want to give it a little bit of room in the garden. But what's great about this grass though is that it's going to stay put. Whereas the clump will get a little bigger, you're not going to find this grass growing in 25 different places uh, in your garden. So it's not going to spread on you. Now of the grasses too, uh, miscanthus grasses tend to be some of the easiest grasses to grow. Now Gracilimus is going to need full sun, which is going to be six hours of direct sun or more a day. And it doesn't really need uh, a great soil or a lot of fertilizer, so you can use this in uh, some of your less than perfect spots. Now on your miscanthus grasses, one of the things to keep in mind is that eventually they will have to be divided. Uh, the grasses do, after a number of years, start to die out in the center and they just keep going out wide. When that starts to happen, what you want to do is in March, early April, dig your grass and uh, cut it up into sections, replant a section of it, and the whole process uh, starts all over again. But it really is advisable to do it when the plant is dormant in March, early April, before the new growth uh, starts to grow. Now, at the same time in March and early April, it would be the time that you're going to want to cut this to the ground. Uh, Miscanthuses and other grasses, they do die uh, from the ground up. So uh, come, come late winter, early spring, cut it down to the ground, do it before the new growth uh, starts coming out, uh, and that would be the best way to go about it. Another nice feature of the Miscanthus gracilimus is the fact that when the wind is blowing, you do get this wonderful kind of movement of the blades of the grass, this kind of wonderful rustling sound that can be kind of soothing if it's planted near your deck or somewhere maybe you sit out a lot. Uh, but also just the, the, the wave appearance of it uh, to visually can be very uh, soothing in the garden. Now another uh, great feature of uh, Miscanthus gracilimus is also the fact that they are very drought tolerant uh, once they are established. Now the year that you plant them you're going to want to keep an eye on the water until they get some good roots down. Uh, so that might be depending on the weather, you might be watering every day, maybe once or twice a week. You know, it's really going to depend on the weather. But once these grasses are well established, they are very, very drought tolerant, don't need a lot of water. So if you have a spot that's a little bit tough to water or dries out a little bit more, you know, the Ormel grasses might be a great uh, idea to put there. Now if you're doing uh, your grasses in a larger garden, and a, a great plant to combine with the Miscanthus gracilimus is going to be this Hydrangea paniculata limelight. And limelight is one of the nicest hydrangeas out there. Really great, reliable bloomer with these big, big flower heads to them. Now, this hydrangea is gonna start out with kind of a lime chartreuse color to it, and then eventually it will turn over to white. The limelight flowers are gonna have great staying power in the garden and hold on for many, many weeks. Uh, even in their dried form later in the season, they still do give uh, some nice appeal in the garden, which also is another thing you can do with the flower heads of limelight is that they can be dried for dried flower arrangements. Now this is going to be a bigger hydrangea. This is going to top out also around six feet in the garden. So this makes a nice complement to the side of Miscanthus gracilimus where it can also get large to use as a backdrop uh, for other plants that might be planted uh, in front of it in, in a garden. Now this is a really easy one uh, to control size of. If you do need to prune it, you want to prune it after the blooming uh, is done for the next year. And it does take very, very well to pruning, so don't be afraid uh, to cut it back to control some of the height uh, a little bit as well. You can keep this a little shorter if, if you would like. So for a couple of great cut flowers for the garden, for different times of the year, for great appeal, can't go wrong with Miscanthus gracilimus and Hydrangea limelight. Another great plant to complement with Miscanthus gracilimus is going to be this wonderful Aster Tartaricus gindi. And although you can't see the flowers at the moment, this plant is going to shoot up to about four to five feet, which would be wonderful to use in front of the gracilimus. And this is going to have great kind of violet purple flowers with yellow centers. The flowers are small, but they're held in clusters. Makes a great cut flower for the fall, but what's key is the fact that this is going to be one of the last plants in your garden to bloom during the season. 
this the flowers on this will even hold even if they get a couple little light frosts on them uh, as well so it's a very hardy very tough plant uh, to use in the garden now this will spread out a little bit so you do want to give it some room in the garden but it's a great great compliment to Grisolimus grass uh, and a great compliment to other grasses and any other fall display uh, as well. This is another aster that's going to be pretty tough. Uh, we'll take some drought conditions, uh, very easy to grow. We'll take a little bit of a less than perfect soil, uh, but again, it's going to be a great, great cut flower for the garden, one of the last things uh, in the garden that's going to bloom for you. So definitely combine it with some very late items. Thanks for watching this week's video on Cascanthus gracilimus and our plants to accompany it. Also, too, make sure you look out for our contests, weekly contests, uh, to guess the plant. We've been getting a lot of great response off that. It's been wonderful. And uh, the first three winners for last week have already uh, uh, been notified. And uh, I'm Henry from Van Wilders Garden Center, and thank you very much.